Hello, my name is Dr. Konstantin Schimmert and this is my conversation with Ronald Sanford, aka Ariel. Today I'm sending from Berlin, the capital of Germany. I'm here in my hotel room and I'm on a business trip at the moment. And I had last week a very beautiful, fantastic podcast with Jeff Rosen, district attorney of the Santa Clara County in California. Uh, Jeff is leading 600 prosecutors and stuff. He is taking responsibility for the safety of 2 million citizens and he is known for the better justice reform. And uh, we had a very, very interesting conversation about questions of respect and fairness in our society, about how could we change the, the criminal justice system in a way that it's fair, more fair for everybody. And during this conversation, I also had the chance to ask Jeff about his opinion on Ronald Sanford's case. And you will see now this outtake about um, this question. And if you want to see the full episode, please click the link below. There is the episode to my podcast on my platform. And it's a very interesting conversation. And as I always ask, please, if you can support this channel, support Across the Pond, support Ronald Sanford. You can do this very easily alone by following this channel, by hitting the bell, by giving a like, and especially by sending this link to your friends, to your family, that it will spread around. And if you are able, please, don't forget to send also some money on our GoFundMe account. It goes directly to Ronald and to Ronald's mother. She will distribute the money to him and we will help him to um, maybe find a way to get out of this prison, to find a way to be set free. In our point of view, Ronald is fully rehabilitated. He is sitting now since over 30 years in prison for a deed he committed when he was a boy of 13 years old. So thank you, watch this, um, enjoy and take care. Now I would like to go in, onto, onto the subject of the possibility of resentencing what you have now um, in your county and you know that I'm involved in this case of Ronald Sanford. Um, yes. Unfortunately, he's not in your county. <laughs> he's very in a very different place in Indiana yes. State Prison. Yes. And so this is a man, and he impressed me so much. I saw this BBC documentary, and he's a man. He is now since 35 years in prison. He's now almost 50 years old. He committed a crime when he was a child, when he was a boy, 13 years old. Yes, it was very brutal. It was really a se severe crime, but he was a child. Um, so how was your position to such a type of practice, to yeah. incarcerate somebody for the rest of his life after such a situation? So I, I, I read about this case, and I've thought about these kinds of cases. And, and so I've, a few things. One, we know that after men are 40 years old, they're, they're just much less violent and it's unlikely that they will commit violent crimes. It's just, and that's just the truth. Um, less testosterone, less whatever. I mean, I, I just think of myself, I'm 54. Like, how much do I want to fight with somebody now? Mm. Just, I don't have the energy. Uh, so... We know that. Um, we know that how you think as a 13, 14, 15, we know that men are not thinking uh, as maturely as they are until they're in their mid 20s. We know that. Yeah. Which, by the way, and I hear this all the time, which in some sense is an argument for okay a violent crime committed by a teenager, yes, they're not gonna be fully developed until they're in their mid twenties. Yes, maybe that's the time to incarcerate them, but in a harm reduction kind of way. But somebody in their fifties, like we know, they're, they're not dangerous in that way. I mean, and 
And given mm -hmm. that you have a 13 year old who's now 52 or however old, they're likely two very different people. Yeah. Um, and so the way I think about this is one of the elements that I think we don't talk about when we talk about criminal justice process is time. Yeah. And, and, here, and, and here's what I mean. A horrible crime, let's, I don't, a 13 year old, we're not prosecuting as an adult here. So let, let's say it's a 17 year old that commits a horrible crime. Okay. And they're caught within a couple days. All right. The community is now, now I'm in the time, the time I'm in now is the community is outraged. A horrible crime was committed by a 17 year old. We're scared. We're frightened. We want justice. We want people to know that these are the rules and they will be followed. So at this point in the process, I think as the prosecutor, what I should be focused on is uh, accountability, uh, justice in a strict sense, public safety. Mercy and second chances is not my primary focus right now. Okay, now there's a trial. There's a conviction uh, that happens a few months later. I, I'm still the person's been convicted. All right, so that's now there's some accountability. We know they're convicted. So now maybe I'm thinking a little bit more about mercy, a little more. But still, this is still in the accountability, strict justice phase. The person sentenced, let's say, for 40 years. Okay. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, it's different. It's different time, different yeah. considerations. Yeah. Um, the community has been satisfied to some extent that there has been justice. Um, if this person did something wrong, they were held accountable. They have been incarcerated for a while. Um, and now there's some space some emotional space, some intellect, some, some mental space to sit back and say, okay, now who is this person 20 years later? Yeah. Have they changed? And, I, and so to me, it is not inconsistent to say what at, you know, after, you know, in the, in the months after the crime was committed, we need strict justice. But 20 years later, we can think more about mercy and rehabilitation yeah, okay. and second chances. And so I, I think what just I found missing a little bit on both of these ends is I have people on the far right that are like, throw away the key, lock yeah. them up, throw away the key. And like, well, you know, for somebody who's 50 or who's 60, I mean, we know they're not dangerous. Like what, what interests are we protecting? I mean, is there something, did they try to kill the president? Like, is there some other reason, which there might be. Um, so on, on the right, I sort of have that conversation. And I also say, because sometimes people on the right are very religious, you know, and I'm like, isn't there, what's the Christian, you know, what, what's the Christian, what's the religious view here that this person's mm -hmm. changed? Mm -hmm. And then on the left, Sometimes I'll hear you can never prosecute a juvenile as an adult. Never, never. Mm. It's like, well, okay, I agree with you that the person shouldn't be in custody for life for a crime they committed as a juvenile. But you really think it's okay that in our juvenile system, somebody's out in a couple of years? You really think that's enough time? Mm. Do you really think our community is going to think that that's justice? Like, that is a, a little bit, now people are maybe thinking about being a vigilante. So I think that the element of time, and I think for the Sanford case, well, well, you undoubtedly know more about it than I do. We have had cases here and our laws have changed such that um, this person, Sanford, like let's say he was even 17 when he did this, not 13. Um, he would be eligible for parole after uh, 25 years. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying he necessarily would get out, but he would be eligible and probably in most places in California, um, he would be, 
re- released at, yeah. at, at some yeah. some point. I, I'm guessing that that the people he killed, I'm guessing that they're white. I don't know if they are. Yeah, they were white, white ladies. Okay, so Old, that, older you know, ladies. Yeah. that's always the other, the yeah. original sin yeah. of, our, of, our, of our country is yeah. um, the, the racial element yeah. as well. So, and Ronald is now el- eligible at, at the age of, for parole at the age of 99. So that's, that, that is his, uh, um, that's when he's eligible for parole. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's not, yeah, that, that, that's a little bit like, there's an old joke here. The, the judge sentences the guy to 150 years in prison. And the guy says, there's no way judge I can serve 150 years in prison. And the judge says, that's okay. Just do the best you can. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the best you can. Yeah. Eligible at 99 is it's a it's a death sentence. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's true. Do you have I don't know I know it's a different very different uh, uh um state. Um do you have any any idea what what could could be done to to help this person to is, what can he it, do it, or Yeah, is it Kentucky? Is that where he is? No, it's Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. Okay. So, um What I've had some influence on other prosecutors that I that I know, either in California or other places, as they have influenced me. You know, I'm not. I. Yeah. It's I. I other others have very good ideas also. Mm-hmm. I honestly do not know any of the elected prosecutors from Indiana, mm-hmm. and so a. I would not be, I don't know, welcomed or, um, but to me, this seems like um, a case where you, I would talk to the elected prosecutor in this county and, uh, and I'm sure people have, I I know this case has gotten a lot of publicity. Um, Sometimes 60 minutes, that's a, a new show here. That's very popular. Uh, does stories that are helpful. Um, I mean, I, I think that, I mean, I know how I would approach it. I, I mean, which is just uh, emphasizing, obviously, how young he was, how sorry he is, um, how, how, how much he has changed. If he's become religious, I emphasize that. Um, and I wonder if the relatives of the vic- I would want to know what the relatives of the victims think. It's okay. often very surprising. So, you know, some yes, sometimes they're like, yeah, I want him to die in prison, but not not always. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, I think that when if the victim's relatives in this case said it's it's enough time, or you know, we whatever we've moved on um you know that might make it a little yeah. easier okay. for the prosecutor or the the judge so no i, I indiana is a little don't know far away um, huh? <laughs> yeah i just yeah. i have i mean you know what it's just not a um whatever it, it's a it's a big country and one thing i was so struck by in germany it was also a big country is you have a federal system like that it's it's sort of one system and it it tends to be more consistent yeah. from region to region that's the idea yeah our system is the opposite it's meant really for things to be a little different in california than they are in georgia and and there's some advantages to our system there's some strengths to that and and there are some weaknesses mm-hmm. and so um You know, I think one of the strengths in Germany is like if the country says this is the kind of justice system we're going to have, then that's the kind of system. Yeah. Here, it's more decentralized. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for your advice, Jeff. Um, might help help us here in this case. Um, we, we are fighting for that because I think it's, it's just a question of humanity for me. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you.